Hi. Now what we've got here is a good example on using iterative methods and in part B I'll show you also how we can use the calculator efficiently to work out approximations to a root. But first of all what we've got is this function g of x which equals e to the power x minus 1 plus x minus 6. And in the first part we've got to show that the equation g of x equals 0 can be written as x equals the natural log of 6 minus x and then plus 1 where x is less than 6. So if you haven't done this already I would like to have a go give you a moment just to pause the video. Okay let's see how you got on. Well First of all then, let's just start with when g of x equals 0. When g of x equals 0, we've got our equation then, which is e to the power x minus 1 plus x minus 6 equals 0. Now we've got to figure out which one of the x's in our equation is this x here. Well, we can see that there's no exponential functions in our answer here so therefore it most probably is going to be this x. And When we look closely we see that we're using natural logs and that's what we're going to have when we take logs to, of our terms. Now in order to take logs so we've got to have two terms. We've got to have one term on one side of the equals and another term on the other side of the equals. So if I add 6 and subtract x, we therefore have e to the power x minus 1 equals 6 minus x. But we've still got three terms here. But if I bracket this off, we've now got two terms. And so I can therefore take natural logs to both sides. I've got the natural log of e to the power x minus 1 equals the natural log of 6 minus x. Now I can use the power of all four logs and that is that I can bring x minus 1 to the front of the natural log of e. And this is going to be equal to the natural log then of 6 minus x. Now the natural log of e is 1. In fact we should know that the log of any number in its own base is always 1. So what we've now got is therefore x minus 1 equals the natural log of 6 minus x. And you can see now if we add 1 to both sides we end up with x equals the natural log of 6 minus x and then plus 1. It's worthwhile pointing out why x has to be less than 6. If x was more than 6 then the value inside this bracket would be a negative number and you can't take the log of a negative number. So logs always have to have a positive value here. Okay, so that's that first bit done. Now we go on to the next bit. We're told that the root of g of x equals 0 is alpha. In other words, the solution to our equation is x equals alpha. And the iterative formula x with a subscript here n plus 1 equals the natural log of 6 minus x with a subscript n here plus 1. And our first approximation to the root x0 equals 2. And this iterative formula is used to find an approximate value for that root alpha. And we've got to calculate now the values of x1, x2, x3, the next subsequent approximations to the root alpha after x0. And we've got to calculate those to four decimal places. So how do we do something like this? Well, on a calculator, what we do is we always put the first root in, our first approximation anyway, and that is x equals 2. So first of all make sure your calculator is cleared by pressing the AC button and then just enter 2 and press equals. Now this is stored as the answer and what we do next is we enter our equation here. 
the natural log then of 6 minus xn. But we can't enter the xn, we just enter it as answer. So it remembers this as the 2 that we typed in just earlier. And then close the bracket and then plus 1. So when we press equals now, we get x1. So x1, when we give it to four decimal places, is going to be 2.3863. Now we need the value of x2. And all we need to do is just press the equals key. And if we do that, we get 2.28473 and so on. So when we write this to four decimal places, x2 is going to be 2.2847. Now finally, we need x3. So if we press the equals again, we get 2.31245 and so on. So when we write this to four decimal places, it's going to be 2.31245. Two five. OK. Now in part C, it says by choosing a suitable interval, show that alpha is equal to 2.307, correct to three decimal places. And as usual, to appreciate this, just draw a sketch graph. Let's just have our axes like so. And we've got this axis as being g of x. So we're told that this graph has a root alpha equal to 2.307. And we've got to choose a suitable interval to prove this. Well, what we do is we take the lower bound for this. And that, if I just mark it on here, would be 2.3065. We then take the upper bound just mark it here. And that upper bound would be 2.3075. In fact, it would be a value just less than it. But what I'm trying to look for is a change in sign. We want the graph to either go from a positive value here to a negative value, or from a negative value to a positive value, indicating that the graph has crossed the x-axis in this interval suggesting then that we've got a root alpha which equals 2.307 to three decimal places. So we just need to work out then what g of the lower bound is going to be, g of 2.3065. Now if you pass this through your calculator, what you should find you get is a very small negative number, minus 0.0000. .0000 275 and so on. So I know the curve is starting below the x-axis here. What I'm hoping for is that when we do g now of that upper bound, g of 2.3075, I'm hoping that we get a positive value. Well, when you do pass that through your calculator for x, you do find you get a positive number, a very small one, 0 0.004419 and so on. So we can see now that the curve has gone from a negative value here and then gone to a positive value here. So it's crossed the x-axis somewhere in that interval. There's our value alpha. So I know that any value in this interval to three decimal places is going to be 2.307. So to summarize, what I'm going to say is that since okay, there's been a change in sign okay, over that interval, then we know that alpha, we'll put therefore, alpha must equal 2.3 zero seven to three decimal places three dp